In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this budget tracker, which shows a monthly overview of your income and expense sources for every month. You're able to allocate certain percentages of your monthly income to each of these four pillars, which will show you a monthly budget and how much you have remaining based on your income. You're able to add monthly goals to your income sources and a monthly budget to your expense sources, which will show how much you have remaining for each of them and whether or not you've achieved your goal or reached your limit. You're able to visually see the state of your finances, add income and expenses, link them to bank accounts, manage and track your subscriptions, and throughout this entire budget tracker, there's absolutely no formulas for you to update. Now, if you just want to save yourself some time and grab this budget tracker for yourself, then be sure to click the first link in the description, or feel free to use this video as inspiration to build it yourself. And with that out of the way, let me walk you through this budget tracker. All right, so the first thing is this overview section. So here you have total, which is just all of your income and expenses, just everything will show up here. Then you have 2024, so you can have different ones for different years. You have the chart, which will show your profit over the year. And then here you have the budget tracker. So for this budget tracker, you have business, personal savings and investments. You can delete these if you want to or add more, but basically just make sure that this adds up to 100%. So here for business, I can, for example, change this. Let's say 30% of my monthly income goes to business and then, I don't know, 50 or 40% goes to personal. So you can change these according to you. And then based off these percentages, if you add new income, so here in the finance tracker, if I add new income, so let's just do Gumroad. So I'm gonna add Gumroad. I'm gonna link this to a bank account. So let's do PayPal, for example, so that it shows up here. And then let's just do 1000. And now if I link this to an income source, so let's link it to Gumroad, it will not only show up here, as you can see, so under income. So for July, I've made $1,000 with Gumroad. If I add more Gumroad related database entries, it will show the total here. And now because I have income, it now splits this up in these percentages. So 30% of 1,000 is 300, 40% is 400, and this is my monthly budget for each of these four pillars. So let's say this one was in the beginning of this month. So let's just change the date to the first, which will make it disappear because this one and this one. So both of these views are filtered to today. So this is today's income and this is today's expenses. This is the monthly income. So as you can see, I can group this according to July. It will show the total income for July. Same with expenses. I can add expenses and then the monthly one will show both of them and this will show the profit. And then this is bank transfers, which we'll get to. So if I, for example, go here and let's say we have a YouTube income and this is linked to, let's say the business account. And let's say this is 500 bucks and link this to income sources. So I'm going to link this to the YouTube one. Then here it will show YouTube under the monthly overview. And now we've added more. So as you can see, it automatically like updates everything according to the percentage, according to the budget, you see your monthly budget, current month, which is expenses, and then how much you have remaining. So now if I go ahead and add a expense, so on this view, if I go ahead and add an expense, so let's say this is software, or let's actually do it like Notion. Let's say I paid my Notion subscription today, then this was linked to the debit one, and let's say this was like 10 bucks or whatever link this to expense source. So this would be software. It will now show here on the monthly overview. So this month in the month of July, I've spent $10 on software. And as you can see here under business, current month is now $10 and that is subtracted from this total monthly budget. And if I click on this view, then you'll see the total monthly income is $1,500. YouTube and Gumroad, you'll be able to see the total, the dates, the source, and also the bank accounts. The expenses, you can see all of them here. So the total is 10 bucks. And then the monthly profit is 1,490. And this shows all of the income and expenses. And now the reason that this is $10 under business and not the other ones is because under my expense sources, so as you can see here, I got software, crypto, food, etc., And here you can link them to one of those four pillars. So software is linked to business. So if I add more database entries, so let's just um, do, I don't know, let's do Adobe or something and link this to a bank account. Let's do it like that. Let's make this one like, let's do 60 bucks and then link this to software. 
then it will show up here. So as you can see, total software is now 70, like it shows there. And then here everything is subtracted. And if I go ahead and add another one, so let's say this is food. So let's link this to debit. And let's say food was 50 bucks and link this to the food one. Then now it will show up under the personal. So as you can see here, it shows up on the personal section because the food expense source is linked to personal. And for both the expenses and income, so I can go to income, here you can set a goal. So for example, for Gumroad, my goal is $3,000. I still have 2,000 remaining because I've only made one. And then here for YouTube, you can see the monthly goal is $500 and I've made $500. So it shows goal achieved. So if this is a little bit more, so 501, it will show $1. And then if it's less, let's do it like that, then it will just show goal achieved and it will show the progress here. So let's just change this back. So you can add your monthly goals for your income sources and the same with monthly budgets. So for example, for food, my monthly budget is, let's say 125 bucks. I still have $75 remaining. I'm 40% on my way to my budget. And yeah, this is linked to the personal expense pillar and then same for living expenses as you can see here monthly budget 1000 remaining 1000 if i go ahead and let's say for example rent or whatever and let's just go ahead and link this to a bank account let's make this 500 bucks link this to living expenses now as you can see on the monthly overview it will show living expenses there and here the amount will be subtracted from the monthly budget and it's the same as the income sources. So if I reach my budget, so let's say for example, this one, 70 bucks, then it will just show limit reached. So basically every month, if your income goals and your expense, like monthly budgets changes, then you can just update them here and it will show everything. And then this will automatically just like keep all the information. So you can go back to previous months. So I can go to February or whatever, and it will show all of February's income and expense sources. So yeah, it's not just according to the current month like this. So if we enter into August, so when it's a new month, then all of this will reset because it's then a new month, but all your information will be stored and kept in sort of this monthly overview section. So yeah, that's pretty much how this budget tracker works. And as you can see here, you also have a progress bar that shows your monthly budget and current month. So we still, still have 50 bucks remaining. And if I, for example, let's say I increase this one with 50 bucks, then it will show a check mark. So we've achieved it. And if this goes over, so let's say 600, then it will now show red. So we're $50 over budget. So it shows green if you're under budget, red if it's over, and then a check mark if you have reached your budget. So when you get this budget tracker, all you want to do is just allocate your monthly percentage for each of these four pillars here, and then just add in your income sources and then add a monthly goal to them and also add in all of your expense sources and a monthly budget to them. And then also importantly, you have to make sure that you link all of your expense sources to one of these four pillars. And then your expense and income sources are the ones that you select here on your finance tracker and also what shows up here on the monthly overview section. And if I now scroll to the top, then here you'll be able to see that for 2024, my total income is 1.5K, total expenses 720, total profit 780, and then taxes is 312, which is just 40% of the profit. And if I go back to the finance tracker, then here you'll be able to see total monthly income, 1,500, expenses 720, and monthly profit is 780. And as you can see here, I've added in bank accounts as I was adding in my income and expenses, which are linked to this bank accounts database. So this isn't linked to your actual bank accounts. This is just in sort of notion, just for you to get an understanding of how much money you have in each bank account. And yeah, like there's obviously gonna be transaction fees and bank fees and stuff involved. So it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but the idea is when you get this budget tracker here at the start amount, you want to add in how much you have currently in that bank account. So as you can see here, I've added in $3,000 and the total expenses for debit. So here in sort of this one is 720. So this has been subtracted from this amount and now it shows the bank balance here. And this is also really useful for software. So if you're like me and you constantly use software and you have a lot of subscriptions, then it's useful to know with which bank account and which card you pay your software subscriptions.
And for your subscription tracker, this is just to manage and keep track of all of your subscriptions. This isn't going to automatically count as expenses, so you still have to add them here, but I will show you how to use this button in a second. But basically, you add all of your subscriptions here. So let's just add a new one. So I'm just gonna do a random one. So let's do, for example, Spotify. And then you just add it in here, open up this, and then here you add the bank account. So let's say I pay this with my debit card. The amount is, let's say, $8, billing type, monthly, and the type is software, renewal date, let's say we paid today. So the next renewal date will be the 14th of August, and you can also just add an icon. So I would just add like a music icon for this one, maybe make it green, and then here you'll be able to see all of your monthly subscriptions on the calendar view. And then once you've paid, you would just add it as an expense. So I would just do this. So add it as Spotify and then link it to debit, $8. And then this would be related to software. And yeah, that's pretty much how you add your subscriptions and also add them as an expense. Now for your subscriptions, you'll be able to see the total monthly amount here. This will be sorted according to the renewal date. So the subscriptions that you're going to pay next. And then if I open this up and go to billing type, then here you see I can pause it or cancel it. And if you've done that, then it will show up on the second view. So this is all your inactive subscriptions and this is all of your active subscriptions. Now, a faster way to add your subscriptions is going to be with this button. So if I edit this button, then you can see that I've already added my three subscriptions here. So if I wanna add Spotify, for example, I would just click on these three dots, click duplicate below, and then I would just rename this. So this would be Spotify. I would change the expense amount. So this would be $8 and the bank account would be my debit card and then I can click on done or oh, actually you also have to add in the date so every month when you click on this button you just have to update the renewal date so you don't have to update everything else you just click go to pick on date and then click on the 14th for example and then you just update that every month and now if I click on this button click on continue it will automatically add all of these subscriptions to my finance tracker and if I go to the monthly overview, you'll see that we've now spent $116 on software and we've definitely reached our limit of $70. Now, the other button I want to show is going to be bank transfers. So this is if you're moving money from, for example, your business account to your debit card and you want to just like make that show up in Notion as well, then you have to use this button. Otherwise, it's going to count as an expense. So in this button, just edit this button. And then here you basically just select, okay, from my debit card, it's going to be $1,000 that I then transfer to my savings account, for example, which is also $1,000. And then this one is going to be tagged as income, this one as expense. So you just edit this button and then you just change, like swap out your bank accounts and then just add in the amount. And now if I go ahead and click on this button, you'll see that it has added it as an expense, but it's not linked to an expense source and it has subtracted the debit amount from this one and added it to the savings account. And all of these bank transfers will show up on this transfers view. So you'll be able to see all of your transfers and none of these will count towards expenses. So here on the monthly overview or the budget tracker, it won't mess with any of this information. Now the other two buttons is going to be to add a new year to this budget tracker. So if you click on this button, it will add two more buttons. The first one will show how to add a new year to this month's database. And the second one will show how to add a new year to this overview section. So you can just click on these buttons and it will show you how. And then this last one is to bulk edit information. So let's say, for example, I want to swap out my debit card relation with my business one. So I want to change these. I would just edit this button. And then here for the filter, I would filter this to where the bank accounts is the debit card. So it contains debit card. And then the thing I would change is going to be the bank accounts relation. And I want to replace it with the business card. And now if I click on done and click on this button, you'll be able to see that all of these database entries has been swapped out and it's no longer related to the debit card, but to the business account. So if you want to bulk edit database entries, it's just way faster to do it through this button than to do it the manual way or to do it through this table view bulk edit option. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this budget tracker. When you get this dashboard for yourself through the first link in the description, you'll be greeted with an onboarding checklist and I walk through showing you exactly how everything works and how to set it up for yourself. 
And if you're upgrading from one of my previous finance trackers and you want to import your database entries over to this one, then I also have a video inside showing you exactly how to do that. So be sure to grab this budget tracker for yourself. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.